Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Emerson from the Azusa Pacific University Health Center, and this is the travel information segment on malaria prevention. Malaria is a potentially life-threatening illness that can occur after a mosquito bite. The three main ways to decrease your risk are to, one, take preventive medication, two, soak your clothes in permethrin, and three, spray exposed areas with bug spray that contains DEET. As far as taking preventive medication is concerned, there are four medications that are usually recommended. Depending on which country you travel to, all four may not be an option since there is varying resistance. After submitting your online travel questionnaire, you should have received an email from the health center that mentioned which medications are an option for you to take. The first medication is called doxycycline and it is used very commonly since it is inexpensive. With your student health insurance, a two-week trip would cost approximately $15. One tablet is usually taken every day and is started two days prior to travel. It is to be taken the entire trip and for one month after returning. It can, however, infrequently cause sun sensitivity, which would make you more susceptible to obtaining a sunburn. Therefore, it is recommended that you use at least 50 SPF sunblock while taking this medication. If you will have significant sun exposure, make sure you bring the sunblock, and this should not be taken by pregnant women. The second medication option is called chloroquine. It too is inexpensive, but can only be used in a few countries due to resistance. Most of these countries are in the Caribbean and Central American areas. It is to be taken once a week, and it should be started one to two weeks prior to travel, and taken for the entire trip and for four weeks after returning. As long as you don't have any problems with your retina, uh, or any visual field changes, you should be able to take this medication. Caution should be used, however, in those that have psoriasis, seizures, liver impairment, or drink frequent amount of alcohol. The third medication option is called mefloquine. This medication is also taken once a week and is usually started one to two weeks prior to travel, taken during the entire trip once a week and for four weeks after returning. It would cost approximately $50 for a two-week trip if, if filled with your school insurance. Anyone with the history of allergy to quinine, seizure disorder, cardiac disease, or arrhythmia, or severe psychiatric problems should not take this medication. Occasionally, this medication can be associated with vivid dreams. The last medication is called Malarone. It is usually taken once daily and is to be started two days prior to travel. It can be taken for the entire trip and for one week after returning. A supply of medication for a two-week trip would cost approximately $100 with your school insurance. Even though it is the most expensive of the medication options, it is also the most effective of the medications. Those that have severe kidney impairment should probably not take the malarone, and anyone with significant diarrhea and vomiting should be cautious when taking it as well. In addition to taking medication for prevention, one should also soak their clothes in a chemical called permethrin. If a mosquito tries to bite you when this chemical is impregnated in the clothing, the mosquito will die. In lieu of soaking all your clothes in this chemical, you could soak one or two pairs of lightweight clothing in this and wear these during the time when mosquitoes are most likely to bite, which is dawn and dusk. The permethrin usually stays in the clothes for about five or six cycles of washing, and a bottle of it can be obtained from most outdoor stores such as REI Co-op. A handout demonstrating how this can be done can be found on the APU Health Center student website under Forms, or one can be obtained from your provider during your consultation. Finally, since none of these above measures are 100% effective, it is always a good idea to utilize some bug spray on the exposed areas as well. Make sure that it contains at least 20% DEET and probably more like 30% would be best. The natural forms of bug spray are probably not nearly as effective as those that contain DEET.